Praise God. Welcome to 2022. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, isn't it? Yeah. Were you blessed by the worship this morning? Yeah. Great job. Ah, so, so good. You know, last week, we did some declarations. I would just like to start with those. Did everybody have those memorized? I'd like to start with those declarations again. And we still don't have them, have them printed. Everybody had the week off this last week. you believe that? Valley Church took the week off. So there was no staff in here with the exception of probably Pastor Tim and Ezzy because they did the Friday night there, the new, whenever New Year's was. Yeah, the party, party, party. So let's stand together and do these declarations first. If everybody would, one more time, stand up. At least one more time. And I'm going to say them, and if you would just repeat them after me again, there's a mere 20 of them, but I think they're very powerful, and I really feel like starting out the new year, we'll make these declarations and decrees. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I belong to Jesus. I am forgiven of all my sin. I am chosen before God in love to be holy and without blame. I'm called chosen and faithful. I submit myself to God. I resist the devil and he must flee. God keeps me from stumbling. I am established in his righteousness. Oppression is far from me. I'm delivered from the powers of darkness. I'm translated into the kingdom of God. I shake off all shame and condemnation. Jesus Christ has made me free. He says I am pure and holy in Him. I'm strengthened by His might. I am an overcomer because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I've found favor with God and man. I declare these things in Jesus' name. Now I'll say, I decree. I break off every spirit of shame, guilt, and condemnation. I break off every lie of the enemy. I break off every spirit of intimidation and fear. I break off every spirit of depression, oppression, and suicide. I submit myself to God. I resist the devil. He flees. I stand, I stand in the power of Jesus Christ and triumph over my enemies. Over my enemies. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I'm gonna, now that staff is back, I'm going to have those printed so you can each have a copy of those. So when you get here Wednesday, Sunday, they'll be available. Uh, the ushers will have them 
have them there to be able to hand out. I think those are stick on your refrigerator kind of declarations or on the bathroom mirror or something as we speak those things over ourselves. I think I, it's been a really interesting week for me. It's like we didn't work, uh, didn't spend any time at the church to speak of, but I was just listening, just, just, just trying to listen and get together the message for this Sunday and even working on and listening for the vision for 2022. And I ended up just writing down. The first thing that I did is like, you know how we do some of the activations in, in, in VSSM. It's like, what is the first thing that you hear? What's, what's the first thing? Just write that down. You know, treasure hunts, we just like write down. Let's soak a little bit and then just write down. Write, write it down. So I just did a little bit of writing to start with. And it's like, okay, what are the first things that are, that are coming to me? What? Holy Spirit, just, just show me some things. And, and so I wrote f- four things down. And then I ended up adding to that. But the first things that I wrote down that I felt like are going to be so strong, so important, so valuable and impactful for 2022 is... I just wrote down forgiveness, how valuable and important forgiveness is in our lives. That, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I, I had a, I, my thinking was, I'm going to be bringing a message this morning on forgiveness, but it's like, no, that's coming. That's coming. There's a message that I did on forgiveness that, that came back to me. Now, I am so... I wish, I wish I did a lot more things like Pastor Rich because he has messages categorized and cataloged for 20 years ago. Me, when I look at one from three weeks ago, I can't really figure out exactly what I meant by it. So it's like, <laughs> so this is from about 12 years ago, and I remember the, the concept, and, and it's, it's about ah, Jacob and Esau. And uh, the forgiveness that was necessary there, and, and I'm going to be bringing that very soon, Lord willing. I believe that that's, that that is something that I will be using soon. Be a message on forgiveness, probably more than one. Uh, and the second thing that I that I wrote down, how important and valuable it has been, and what an incredible lesson in my life that it's been, is like finances, finances and tithe. Finances and tithe. You know, one of the basic foundational things I just call 101 Christianity is, is tithe and how we handle our finances. I don't mean just giving first fruit, just taking care of tithe. I'm talking about how we handle our finances. We're going to be, this, this year, I feel like, you know, all of the stimulus checks and all of the crazy, amazing, awesome, wonderful, and, and horrible things that happened in 2021, it's time that we really take stock and pay attention to our finances, being good stewards of what God's given us, and giving Him the first fruit. I think finances, there, when you start digging into opening up, opening up your Bible and seeing what it says about finance, there's more, more Scripture about money than there is about love in the Bible. Pretty interesting. So we will be talking some about, about finance, and, and it's not just, I mean, over the last two years, we have had the best two years as far as financial soundness and financial health in the church than we had the previous 10. It's like, thank God. So Pastor Lynn does not have to get up here and ask or beg you for money. We got bills that need to be paid. It's like, no, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. For the generosity and the obedience of your people that gather here together at Valley Church. The things that we have to be grateful for and thankful for. Then one the other thing that I have, have written down is generosity. How generosity has been so key and I believe it's something that I'm going to talk about a scripture here just in a few minutes. But when we think about one of the two commands that we're given, it's like, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. And for us, generosity for us as 
this body of believers, generosity is really big in being able to love your neighbors so that we be a generous people. Forgiveness, finances and tithes, generosity. And what I actually have at, at, at the top of the list here is... Uh, <laughs> P-O-W and W-O-W. P-O-W is like power of words. The power of our words. We're going to end up talking more as, as we're making these declarations. You know, one of the things, when we started doing the declarations, the tithe declarations, our tithes have just continued to increase. People have gotten that jobs and more jobs and better jobs and and God has just blessed our church. And, and I, I think about, you know, we don't get up and talk a lot about it. We don't teach a lot. We certainly don't get up here and beg. But the tithes and offerings, we've been so blessed as a church, as a congregation. And we've seen the words that we speak every Sunday morning come to fruition. It's, it's amazing. Power over, power of words is they're powerful they're powerful and when you know it's thoughts words actions thoughts words actions but our words can end up changing our thoughts when we speak positive words the most important voice in your life is your own and when you make those declarations you will start to believe it we can change our thoughts and the way we think by the things that come out of our mouth. And the wow, it's like watch our words. Watch our words. You know, I was just thinking about, about words and the words that come out of, my, out of my mouth. Sometimes they still disappoint me and I have to end up finding myself apologizing to somebody. It's like, ow. Oh. You know, what's, what comes out of our mouths as believers, as brothers and sisters in the Lord, is supposed to be words of edification, that we're building one another up. But we're in a society that has taken sarcasm and made so much entertainment and fun out of sarcastic words that that is sometimes the first thing that comes out of our mouth is something sarcastic because we want to be funny. It's like, oh, Lord, forgive me. Ah, that was, I am so sorry. I think as, as believers, we can check one another up on that. It's like, whoa, was that edifying? Did that build me up? Was that? <laughs> no. When we hear something that's supposed to be funny yet is sarcastic, everybody's getting really quiet now. <laughs> Does this not make sense? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Man, if our heart is full of sarcasm and little ornery things, that's what we're speaking. If our heart is full of love and compassion for one another, that's what should be coming out. We should be encouraging, we should be building up, not tearing down with sarcasm. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We're speaking blessing or we're speaking cursing, curses. What do we want to come out of our mouth? You know, we're going to talk more, <laughs> more about this, and we're going to continue with declarations as, as, as we move into uh, 2022. Watch our words. I think even I, I wrote down dash off to the side of W-O-W, is prophetic seeds. The words that we speak over our own lives are prophetic seeds. So I, I was just, I was even thinking of, of, of an activation. It's like, wow, you know, we should just, uh, I should have passed out papers and have everybody, let's just soak for a few minutes. And then, and, and then I want you to write down what you are hearing from God or seeing Him in how He sees you. Like, and start speaking, the writing some of those things down. Here's how he sees me. Here's how he sees me. Here's how he sees me. This is who I am in Christ. 
And we start making those declarations over ourselves until we begin to believe those things and then step into them. Two o two two. There's a whole lot of twos in that 2022, isn't there? Me being a little bit of a a little bit of a numbers person and curious numbers, I started to look up what's two. What is what what is the impact of two in the Bible? What does the Bible have to say about two? What's the significance of of two? Because we got three of them in here. Two zero two two. And so I, I just jotted down some things that I thought because the definition of some spiritual significance that it's union, unity. Two, bringing two together is, is union. That's a significance. Uh, two becoming one, where two parts come together where it's union and unity. And the other one is division or choice. There's two choices. Two choices. And I think it's like there's a scripture that, that, that says... I have set before you, in Deuteronomy, I have set before you life and death. Talked about that a couple of weeks, maybe last week or a couple of weeks ago. I set before you life and death. Choose life that you and your descendants might live. And then we read, we read and we're going to read a little bit in the, in the epistles of John, 1 John, where it says, where Jesus is life. Jesus is life. Choose Jesus because he is life that you and your descendants might live. So I, I listed some things, too, that I, that I think about. Wow, here's some, here's some significance. And, you know, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. Two parts to the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Old Covenant, New Covenant. Everybody say, thank God for the new covenant. <laughs> there's good, there's evil, which are choices that we have to make. It's good, evil, good, evil. There's a dividing line, the division right there. It's one or the other. There's daylight and there's dark. And the Bible is talking about, we, do we walk in the light or do we walk in the dark? Do we choose light or do we choose dark? There's two, a couple, a husband and wife. The really beauty in that is where the two become one. Where two become one flesh, it talks about. That's where union and unity comes together. There's a number, another two that I, that I find. Jesus Christ and his church, which is his bride. And two parts. We're born into a sinful world, but we are, as the young lady was up there being baptized, as Chris, we are born again into new life, which is everlasting. We're born, we're born again. It's two parts. That you must be born again. Two parts. We have life, we have death. On earth here, there's two parts. Life, death. Choose life. Choose life. Choose Jesus. That's life. We have male and female. Every couple, that, everything that God created, He created a male and female in that for, for animals and for the people. Male and female. Male and female. Male and female. Male and female. It's like, what is happening to our society today? It's like, one of, uh, I probably shouldn't mention, one of our school, one of our local schools, just down the road here a little ways, <laughs> has an instructor that does not, a professor that does not want to be called sir or ma'am, but referred to not he or she or sir or ma'am, but it's just like, oh my goodness, how messed up is our thinking and teaching and even our, some of our local Talking just right down the road here a little ways, not mentioning any names. God has given us two commandments. We have 
two commandments that it says, all of the laws and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That you love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. Love the Lord God. And that you love your neighbor as yourself. Those are, those are like two commandments. That, that What's the common? Love. 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 And... There's a scripture talking about a double-minded man. There's two answers. There's yes or there's no. There's a decision that we have to... Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no. What? On that note, I've got an amazing young man that's going to come up here, going to share the pulpit with me for a little bit, and share his testimony. Colton Cooper. How we doing? Hmm? How we doing? Doing great. Good. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Colton Cooper. Uh, I was raised in this church. Um, been going here since I was four o'clock or four. Uh, four o'clock. Wow. Yeah. Four o'clock. Um, yeah, my mind's a little frazzled. <laughs> so, uh, pretty much grew up doing all the same things uh, as every kid in church, and uh, just thinking I'm living for God and uh, not really pursuing Him and. Uh, just coming to Sunday, coming to church every Sunday, and it wasn't until about, I'd say maybe middle school, I decided that I wanted to do all kinds of other things. And just uh, just recently, back in, around my birthday in October, towards the end of the month, um, I decided I need to start pursuing God more and stop living the way that I was. And it was a struggle for the towards the last of the month and then I guess the significance of the new month of November, I decided that that's when I definitely needed to change and um, really stopped uh, doing all the things that I was doing. Can we, can we back up just a little bit? I guess. <laughs> where, do you, where do you want to go? I was just thinking uh, that I remember you going to church camp. I remember being many, many times at church camp and watching you absolutely get rocked, blasted, and blessed at church camp and your participation at church camp, but then come back and it just kind of changed. Any explanation for that? Uh, well, I guess just coming back into the world, uh, leaving the presence of God like that, um, coming back into all the other stuff, all the, the friends and um, everybody I'd surround myself with, just kind of sunk back into um, the everyday life of not being in godly presence constantly every day and pursuing him and uh, friend like non like minded friends I guess in school and then I guess just recently I realized that I can take that with me and not not just wait for Sunday and God's presence other people bringing God's presence into the church and and being around it there. Um, and really pressing into him throughout my daily life, everywhere else, at work especially, and sitting at home. And so that's been really great, really getting to realize that he's always there. And so just recently I decided to get baptized. And while praying about it and driving around in my work truck, um, Asking God, is this something that I need to do right now? Am, am I ready? Not knowing that you don't have to be ready for it. <laughs> and, he, and he really He just, grew up in church. <laughs> he really just touched me right there in my pickup, and I started crying. I was worshiping and realized that, uh, yeah, I can, I can make this next step and uh, live for God even more than I was. And it's been great. Just always feel more joy. Uh, Stopping listening to the music that I was listening to and doing all the other things. 
What else would you like me to touch on? <laughs> you write it down for you? Yeah, that'd be nice. No, I, uh, one of the things that it's like, you know, when, the, when, the, when you're not hiding anything anymore, it's like you don't have to be looking over your shoulder. You don't have to be looking back. When we did Celebrate Recovery, we, we, we talked about, you know, we brought it out, throw it out there, because we are overcomers. And you have to have something to overcome. You, you, you overcome by having an obstacle to overcome. One of the obstacles that you overcame, uh, alcohol. So why don't you talk about that just a little bit? All right. Um, or maybe quite a bit. Yeah, alcohol became a huge part of my life. Uh, I guess starting about 19 and... Um, there you go. On up to... Oh, oh well, just yeah, recently. there we go. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Um, and I was just always surrounded with people that were drinking, and it was just a thing. It was That was life, really, just to cure boredom and all kinds of stuff. And and I I knew obviously that it wasn't something I needed to be doing. I needed to quit all that. And I'd I'd prayed relentlessly throughout the years. Um, God, please remove this desire from my life to want to drink and uh, escape life through alcohol. And uh, just back in the beginning of November, I just I realized that it wasn't uh, a thought process God was going to remove from my mind. I had to make the decision to just stop and uh even though i still craved it and wanted all that stuff to pursue god more instead of go drinking in my living room i sit in my room and read the bible instead and uh as much willpower that took it uh it's paying off so I'm very thankful for that <laughs> well, I was thinking maybe what you shared in my office a little about an hour or so ago. Maybe you'd even touch on that. Well, you know, sometimes um, when we make a decision, we're changing our life. There's things that we're doing different, and, and we take that stand. I think. Um, and the enemy doesn't just absolutely roll over and play dead. He's still going to come back and give it another effort and another effort. And he's going to put you in a circumstance and, and having an opportunity that is temptation. The Word tells us that there is no temptation that he will not give us an opportunity or an escape from. Nonetheless, we have to take that opportunity and make that escape. So, okay, now it's back to you. That was your, that was your hint. All right. Well, then I guess I'll touch on a definitely have been... Uh, tempted since since the beginning of November, and I have fallen a few times, but it is uh, God's given me the strength still to continue to be motivated and have the stronger willpower to uh, overcome it. And uh, something also yesterday, right after Lynn called me, um, I kind of I was my roommate was sitting in the couch next to me, and he heard the phone call. And uh, I got off the phone and, and said to him, I, I don't know if I'm qualified to really give a testimony like this. And um, he, he let me know right then that watching me pursue God more and walking in God's word and everything has really inspired him, which I didn't realize at all. But, uh, yeah, he's been pursuing God and trying to grow in his faith even more and more as, uh, as he's watched me. So that was really great to hear. This is a really important decree right here, Colton. I break off every spirit of shame, guilt, and condemnation. You want me to read it? Yeah, I want you to read it really nicely. Right there, this is for you. I break off every spirit of shame, guilt, and condemnation. Is this that one? Oh, you yeah, that, you can read that one again, too. I break off every lie of the enemy.
You know, something that he, that he just said that I think is so, so, so important to all of us. I mean, as, as parents, we know that our kids are watching us and our kids are listening to us. But just like, like Colton, you don't even think about what your roommate is watching and what your roommate is experiencing through your walk, through the decisions that you're making, through you standing strong. It's just like that gives... Uh, Billy Graham made a comment when... Uh, when one man takes a stand, it stiffens the backs of others. It's like, wow, you, you always, 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 we all have a circle of influence. Somebody's always watching what we're doing. And we, we, we think it's awesome. Praise God, they saw that, they saw that. And it's like, oh, Lord, help me, they saw that. <laughs> but when they see that... And then they see me get up and walk again. They see that. They're impressed by the that. So, everybody just, ex were you done? Did you have any more you yeah, wanted to share? I think so? Okay. Well, I don't want to cut you short. Everybody just extend their hands to Colton right now. Father, I'm just, I, I am, I'm just thankful right now for Colton. And I am thankful, Father God, for the stand that he's taking for you for the steps that he's taking towards you. And I pray that you would continue to strengthen him, that you would continue to encourage him, and that he will continue to walk into your truth, leaning on you, not on his understanding, but on your truth. Strengthen him, encourage him, bless him, and let your anointing rest on him, that you will use him to be a mouthpiece for you. And everybody said? Yeah. Bless you, Colton. Thank you for your transcript. <laughs> I love technology. <laughs> Great. I need Matthew or somebody I had. Somebody just texted me. I had a, a scripture that I was, re a, a, a quote that I was ready to read here. And, and, oh, it came back. Perfect. Thank you for fixing that, Matthew. <laughs> Pastor Matthew. This is a quote by William Murray that, I've, that I have long, I say, lived by, believed in, uh, even, even for my own life and, and, and things when... when God gives you a, a direction, a dream, a vision or something. Um, I heard this or a version of this many, many years ago. But Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back. Always ineffectiveness concerning all acts of initiative and creation. There's one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. When we make a decision... A yes decision. When we make a yes decision and we take that first step in receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, for example, in being baptized and say, yes, no, I need to quit that. I, I'm going to quit that. I, I, I quit. And we take that step, providence comes with us. Providence is the favor of God. The favor and the strength of God. Let's just say the favor and the strength of God comes with us and follows us. It's just like I'm, I'm thinking in, in Colton's circumstance right there that, that he was talking about. He goes, well, you know, I've, I've been sober for this long. I've tripped a couple times. Well, God's right there to catch you and, and pick you up. Set you back on your feet, saying you're forgiven, son. You're forgiven, one of the things that, that, that Colton and I were talking about this time as we were back in my office is just like, well, you know, it's not a huge deal. It's not a huge deal. I just, I just had a couple of beers on New Year's Eve. 
Like, it's not a huge deal, but he said, it made me feel so guilty. It's like, okay, if you know it's something that you're not supposed to do, and it made you feel guilty, then was that sin? Yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Is having a beer necessarily a sin? Not for everybody. No. Not for everybody. It, it, It would be for me because it's something that I have made a commitment that I, you know, I have crazy alcoholism in my, in my family, and I've seen, I'll just throw something out here. It's like, I have been either in business and had my own officer at the church and had an office here at the church for six, six, 16 years, yeah, 17, almost 17 years. Next month will be 17 years I've had an office here at the church, and for the previous almost 30 years I had a, a, an office elsewhere where I one of my other businesses, never one time has somebody ever come into either one of my offices and said, hey, boss, or Pastor Lynn, it is incredible how well my life is going since I started drinking. <laughs> Not once has that happened. Man, the freedom that I walk in, the, it's, just, it's amazing what's happened since I started drinking. But I couldn't tell you how many times I've counseled, helped, uh, bailed out of jail. (laughs) People that said, yeah, you know, that have lost their job, that have lost their family, that have lost their wife, their husband, because of alcohol. There is over a hundred, I can can guarantee you there's over a hundred warnings in this book about the dangers of alcohol in your life. So I choose to abstain. That doesn't mean that that's the rule that everybody has to follow, that if you have a beer with your pizza or a glass of wine that, that you're going to hell, that you're sinning. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for me. And kind of throwing that out there as a warning because there's over 100 of them in here. All right. Are we good? Some are smiling. Some are really quiet. Some are frowning right now. It's like, well, well... I break off every mean stare right now. (laughs) Okay. Shuffle the papers around again and again and again because I made myself nervous right there. Uh, Okay, we are ready to go to... Oh, I want to throw one more thing out there that if over the next couple of weeks, I would encourage each of you to read through First John, Second John, Third John, Epistles, and James and Peter. Peter, James, and John. That's, pretty, that's a pretty good sound, right? Because you're going to be hearing more about that. Now, okay. Um, I want to turn to the first thing that I want to talk about right now. It would be in uh, 2 John verse 1. Come on, Lynn, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Okay, now let's go to 3 John, verse 2. That's what I meant. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, be in health, just as your soul prospers. That you would prosper and be in health in all... (laughs) That you would prosper... In all things, and be in health just as your soul prospers. When I think of the things that we contend with and are happening and coming in 2022 and in the incredible opportunities 
that are coming in 2022, how important it is, we, we're, we're starting to build a team, a deliverance team. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you've received, freely give, cleanse the lepers. Um, when we think about all of the different soul wounds that people have, that have gone through, um, sometimes it, it, it's as easy and as quick as asking forgiveness, and it, it's done. It, it, it's done. I mean, I've, first, I've, I've prayed for somebody right there. We had a line of people. Benji would remember there. Are several people that would remember this. A line of people came to stand in front of me, and, and, and the very first person that I put my hand on to be delivered ended up delivered from a spirit of, of pornography and stuff. And instantly, I've shared this before, uh, but some of you definitely have heard it. I just put my hand out, put it on his chest, and said, you know, you, you be healed and delivered, and bloop, he threw up on my arm. But that quick, he was delivered because of the authority that lives, that same power that lives in me, gave me the authority, which shocked me and soiled my arm. But it was kind of a, it's like, wow. Renee and I saw him and his wife the next day dancing. They had the little boombox going. They were dancing outside, couldn't wait to get in for the next session that we were having here. Sometimes it's that simple that it just takes a quick prayer and the laying on of hands, and it's done. We spent hours and not had complete success. So we have got some training that's happening that's taking place for people that have a desire to operate in that realm. I believe that all of us are given the authority to do that. I believe that when we're called on, if we will step up in obedience, that God will show up. It was that very, that very evening that I'm talking about that everybody that I lay hands on, they didn't all throw up on my arm, thank God, but everyone ended up falling out in the Spirit. That was my first experience of actually seeing that happen because the power of God just showed up and boom, boom, people set free, set free, set free, set free, delivered and just out with a big smile on their face, you know, under the presence of God. It's like, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So that's one of the things that we're really going to be focusing on is seeing soul wounds healed. Because through those wounds, we open up the door. Now this, this probably sounds a little bit crazy to some of you, but I've seen it now so much that there's no question in my mind that through those wounds that we receive, it opens up the door, opens up a wound, would you say, a gate, a wound, for the enemy to stick a hook in there. doesn't matter if you were five years old, if you were, when something happened to you that opened a door for the enemy to have access into your life. And now, the picture that, that I have and had with this, and I probably have shared before that some of you have heard, that's like, that's like where the devil, his little demons, have had the opportunity to stick a hook in that, in that spot, that wound that we've had, and then let you go. He let you go. You know how you hook a fish and you can watch it swim? You can play it. If you're not catching very many fish, it's more fun to go ahead and reel it back in again, let it go, and then reel it back in again. Just play around with that thing till you finally got it so worn out. It's like, oh, game over. Come on in. We're going to eat you later anyway. That's exactly the kind of game that the enemy will play with you if you have not removed the hook and had the opening healed up. Amen. And it didn't have to be your fault. 
It can be someone else that caused that pain, that caused that hurt in your life, that allowed the enemy through that hurt, through that wound, the gate was open, stick a hook in there, and we try in our best effort, and we end up just going around in one great big circle, and it's like, anybody relate to this? Mm -hmm. That's where we have to end up getting to the point that we're ready to give it all to him, that we're, we have an inner healing right now that happens here. We take appointments for, for inner healing, that some people are able to be delivered just through an inner healing process that happens in that corner room right back over there that, you know, you can make an appointment and, and we've, God's done some amazing, incredible things through this team of people. What we're looking at building now is, is next level, where it's like serious demonic stuff that needs to be taken care of. But I would encourage you, if, if, if you feel like something that I've just described, like, man, I just can't quite do it. I can't quite shake it. I get pulled back around, and I, no matter how hard I try, I end up in the same cycle. Make sense? I encourage you. I mean, sometimes we can pray and pray and pray, but it is not revealed to us until we have done a deep, deep search to find out where the hurt came from, how the enemy got in there. Okay. That's coming. Next level, coming in 2022. I want to I go now... To, I, I want to just talk about this a little bit, this, this generosity, this generosity and finance thing. You know, I, tithe was a very difficult thing for me for a long time. As soon as I started making more money, it's like, holy smoke, I thought it was hard to give 10% in the beginning, make a little bit more money, the number just gets bigger, that makes it even harder. There's more things that I want, there's more things that I need. It's like, oh, so I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go too deep into that right now, but the same thing with generosity. If I, I look at, I'm just going to tell you some of the things that Renee and I, that Renee and I do. Um, because God has been so good to us, and realizing that the money that he's put in our hands, the more loosely that we hold on to that, and, and let it go, that we become a conduit for that money, it is not like a stagnant something that's dammed up. It's like if we let it flow through us, then it, more of it comes. We release it and more comes. We release it and more comes. I mean, Pastor Tim has, has well, three years. We've, it'll be three years next month that, we, that we've been together, and I just tell him, the more generous that we are, Tim, the more generous that he is with us. And we have so seen that over the last couple of years. Like, oh my goodness, you, you could ask him, he could tell you story after story where, you know, we, we can end up having a pauper mindset where we have got to hang on to it. We've got to hang on to it. We have to be prepared for the future. That's true. We do have to hang on to some of it. We do have to be prepared. But when we're generous, it doesn't have to even make sense to us. <laughs> we just give it out. Renee and I, I've just used some examples over the last few weeks. One really fun thing happened about four days ago. We were sitting in the uh, date night. We went to Mr. V's for date night the other night. Rarely do we end up there for dinner. That's our breakfast place usually. But we were there for dinner the other night, and we sat down, and, and uh, as we sat there, I just was thinking, you know, I feel like the Lord wants us to bless somebody here. And uh, I said to Renee, just leaned over to her, and hey, when you're married, here's something I'm going to have to throw in here. When you're married, it's a really good idea to be on the same page before you start giving money away. <laughs> just saying. I said, Renee, I just feel like, like blessing somebody here to, to this evening. I says, anybody stand out to you? And she, she kind of looks around and she says, yeah, right there. 
I said, ah, exactly. I was looking for confirmation. It's really great when you can make it someone else's idea. Especially your wife's or your husband's, you know. And so, it's like, oh, yeah. So, this couple that was sitting there, they're in a table like, like this far away from us. There's the speaker and here's us. So, we can kind of hear their conversations. I was like, Shh, I'm trying to listen right here. Yeah. It's like, we can talk when we get home. Let's listen right now, you know. Uh, so we're, we're kind of listening to their conversation. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I got the, wait, the, the server. Waitress is not the right term anymore, is it? I got the server to come over. It's like, hey, could, could you come here? Come so she came over there and said, um, we'd like to buy their dinner. She said, what? So said, we'd like to buy their dinner. Uh, would you just slip the ticket by to us and, and very anonymously, please. Okay. So she did that, and those people are waiting, and, and, and so we're, we're now we're really listening. And so he, he says to her, well, she hasn't been back here. We, we, we still don't have a ticket yet. And so finally she comes, and she's like, hey, could I get the ticket? We're, we're ready to go. We, we need the ticket. And she goes, oh, that's been taken care of for you. And he said, what? I said, no, that's been taken care of for you. And oh, I, I didn't mention he was in a wheelchair. Um, and so he had reached around behind and he knew exactly where, pulled his wallet out of a little pouch thing back there and was opening his wallet and he pulled out a 20. Didn't see a, I was looking over his shoulder. I didn't see a lot of dollars in there. And he pulled out a 20 and uh, he said, oh, huh, uh, could I get change for this then? And so she went, she brought him change and he says, <laughs> but here's the, the really funny part, it wasn't his server. So the other server that had been taking care of us just dropped by there. I get it. And I almost got the story messed up right off the bat. So, so she said, he's like, do you have change? Do you have change? So she said, yes, I have a whole bunch of change here. And he said, here, give me $10. And then he said to her, you keep the other 10. And she goes, Oh, well, thank you. He didn't realize that wasn't his server. <laughs> so she's just, oh, thank you. She's like, she looks at him and she walks away and he, he's going, he, he said to his wife, he said, well, I just wanted to really be generous and somebody, you know, took care of us. And he said, do you see anybody in here that you know? Do you see anybody that walked out that we might know? And they're just like, they're turning circles looking all around. No, no. He goes, wow, that's, that's, that's weird. It's like, uh, I want to give him a good tip. And so he gives the wrong girl $10. <laughs> and she just walked away saying, thank you. <laughs> Pretty quick, his server came by, and he looked at her, and he goes, where you are? They did look, they, did, they both had blonde hair, I guess. <laughs> so close enough, I guess. They both had blonde hair, so he looked at her, and he said, were you... And she goes, no? I mean, yes, I was your server. N was she? No, not her. He goes, oh, great. So he reaches back in his wallet, and then he leans over to his wife or, or, or whatever, whatever she was, and he goes, you know what? I just feel like someone's been really generous with us, that we should just go ahead and be generous. And so he gives the other one $10. So now he's given both servers that worked that in, to each of them, $10. And so then we get to listen to the conversation, and he said, you know what? He said, somebody's been really generous with us, and their bill, by the way, was $31, so uh, they still got off easy. <laughs> Paying a $20 tip. But I'm saying my point is that generosity, it was really fun to watch, and they just they decided, you know what? We just need to pass this on. We need to pass it on. People are watching what you do and what they get to experience, and in that experience, they want to do it. Does this make sense? Generosity is contagious. We need to be a generous people. Um, we had, I mean, we had two other opportunities. We had uh, where I've just like dig and see how much money I got in the envelope or something. We, 
two different times, and I, here again, it, it, we ended up having the opportunity to hand five $100 bills to somebody that I just felt, and, and Renee and I will ask, she's saying, well, I feel like we need to give, I feel like we need to give, the Lord's impressing me to give, and, and she'll say, uh, well, how much? And I will say a number, almost always, we have the same number picked. So we get a confirmation. It's like we had two different people just a little bit before Christmas that we felt compelled both to give five $100 bills to. So we did it. And then what happens to us? God just blesses us, showers it right back down into our laps so we can do it again. Now I say that, talking about the generosity part, because when we get back to finances, it's like, well, how do you do that? Well, there's two things that I think are so key, and we're just going to, I'm just touching on this, is, and that I share with everybody that comes around and will listen to. It's like, what you absolutely have to do is establish for yourself a budget that you are living on the maximum of 80% of the income that you have. 10% goes to the Lord. First fruit, 10% goes to God. The other 10% you need to invest into your future. At least 10 and 10. And that's only the 10% for tithe. What we do, obviously, as I just shared, and then someone has asked me the other day, it's like, well, when I feel a need to help somebody and I give them money, should I count that as my tithe? And from my perspective, it's absolutely not. That's not part of your tithe. You're not giving it, per se, unto the Lord, into the place where you are fed. You're choosing where you decide that you want to give that. Rather, than, Does it make sense? That's part of your offering. Alms. Offerings. Right? Everybody agree? More or less? Kind of. More. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's not... That, that, no, that's not... That is not your tithe, that's your offering. That's above and beyond tithe that you're giving to your local church, the place that you're being fed. Um, so, if you are giving that first 10%, the next 10% is for you, then there needs to be a percentage or something in there that's available for you to be able to hand out to others. So you cannot... Have your paycheck, the government, I mean, the government, the system that is set up and established for us is to keep us in bondage. It's like you are going to be a slave to the lender. If you are living on credit cards and borrowed money, and every time your paycheck comes in, it's like, man, I have nothing left over, you can't be generous. You've tied yourself down. It was your choice. It's the decisions that you made. And some of them were pretty dumb decisions. You didn't really need that. You just wanted that. I was going to read a bunch of scriptures, but I've done so much talking that if you read what I'm talking about, you read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, you read James, you'll get the scriptures that are backing up exactly what I'm telling you. It's that we be good stewards of the money that he's given us because as, as, like I shared last week you can't give what you don't have now how dumb would that be for me to go borrow money to give $500 here and $500 here and then have to pay that back and pay interest on it that would be nuts what Renee and I try to do is we try to live on less than half of the money that we have coming in so we can end up having the freedom to be able to do not only to give 10 I would say a lot more than 10% back to the church but to end up having money to be able to bless people in the kingdom because we're good stewards of what he's given us and we live on much much less than what comes in if you will live on less money than you have coming in, if you'll 
quit with the credit, the easy payment plan stuff, and start buying stuff, writing a check, using a credit card and paying the whole credit card off at the end, man, you will end up walking in a whole nother level of freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, but we don't have true freedom if we have financial bondage. So in 2022, we need to be walking in we need to be walking in financial bondage no more. No more. We don't want to be a slave to the lender. And I just want to encourage again that we really, really, really pay attention to the words that we let come out of our mouth. Watch our words. Watch our words. Watch our words. And as we continue to make declarations over our own lives, it's like, oh. I mean, I still do this sometimes. Not often. Sometimes I still do this. Like, oh, Lynn, you knucklehead. What in the world were you thinking? And then I catch myself. It's like, oh, you are one of the smartest guys I know. <laughs> How did you slip and do that? Just don't do that anymore. You know, you know better. You, you, and change the words that we use and the things that we speak over ourselves. When we change the words that we speak over ourselves and that we're paying attention to what, what our heart position is, you know, it's checking, checking your heart position before you speak over somebody. Where am I coming from? Where am I coming from? Do I want to hurt their feelings just a little bit so everybody can get a laugh out of it? It's like, no, no. I want to encourage them. I want to build them up. All right, would you stand? Father, I thank you. You are such a good, 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 good father. I thank you for how much you love each and every one that's, that, that has come into your house this morning. I thank you for your word, for your direction, and I thank you for your Bible, the guidebook that you've given us. Your word says that we will be led, that we will be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we will be led by that Holy Spirit that He will teach us all things, that He will bring into our remembrance the things that we need to remember that we already know about You. I pray, Lord, that You will speak to each one of us, that You will show us clearly the path and direction that You have for us for this year 2022, that those things which, which we choose, which we choose, that there's a choice of right or wrong, that you will give us the truth and the wisdom to choose right, to choose truth, to choose godliness every time, and that you will give us the strength as we make the commitment, as we speak the yes, that you will give us the strength to walk that yes out that you'll give us the courage to say no when we need to say no, to reject any and everything that comes from the enemy or the wrong spirit. And I pray that you will show each one of us how much we are loved and that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus called according to his purpose for our lives. I thank you and I praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>